Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Around the world brought me so much oh, joy, I'm sorry. and no. it was. Uh oh, can you hear me? No, no, I. Yes, but you stopped, so that's when I was like, I couldn't hear you. But yes, around the world brought okay. me so much joy. Thank it, you. It, I'm, so glad. It, I'm so glad. It really did. It really not only did it take me back to kind of like this golden era, which you have a firm hand as part of of black led cast and seeing these beautiful professional women who have parts of their lives figured out, but are still navigating the rest. And oftentimes black women are not allowed to have that space. It's either you have it all together or you don't have none of it together. And this allows us to see a new generation of black women who are successful, but are navigating the other things. What is the key to developing this since it's almost like you're, you're, you have such a mastery of it, of bringing these women, of what bringing women together in these types of archetypes of characters for you, what is the, the key of shaping stories like this? It's not that complicated. It's simply telling our truth and allowing ourselves to be vulnerable and flawed and honest. Just, I mean, it really is that simple. It's like ripping pages from our diary and then laying ourselves bare. And when we really kind of peel back all of the weight of society and whatever ails us, there's just a lot of love and hope and intellectualism that we wanted to put on display, you know, and it, and it, and it exists in each of us, you know what I'm saying? Like we're, we are, multi, each of us is multifaceted. And so we wanted to make sure that the characters that were as um, kind of diverse in their points of view, but that that's as possible, but that also they could all they could be the closest of friends. Your friends don't have to be mirrors of you. Your friends can be mirrors for you, but they should not be a mirror of you. <laughs> your friends help you see yourself, but you shouldn't see yourself. <laughs> you shouldn't see your friends when you look in the mirror. If that Absolutely. makes sense. I think it does. <laughs> Is it in an in an so, era? I mean, it's, not really, I mean, it's interesting because I do get asked questions like that a lot. <laughs> it's just not that complex. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, if you, if you, if you, when you simplify it, it kind of organically is diversified when you, you know what I'm saying? When you don't try too hard, when you just kind of take what is, what is real and important to you and put it on the page, then it kind of very organically translates to, to the stage and then the screen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people are afraid of realness when it pertains to black women and seeing black women in a different light and not the pigeonhole that we've, we've been placed into and not to discount the contributions of others to the medium, but is it difficult to bring these stories to, to the forefront? We had an era where we had lots of them and then we didn't have, I, we didn't see enough. And this is such a beautiful depiction of who we are as black women. Is the road to bring these stories to life easier, more challenging? What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, <laughs> having been on this road for three decades or more, <laughs> um, we are definitely experiencing a black renaissance. There is definitely a, um, a greater deal of openness to our stories and not just for optics. You know, I think there's a real interest and real dedication to allowing us to tell our stories. And again, when I say allow, it's because we're not typically the gatekeepers you know, for this. And I mean, Stars and Lionsgate have been amazing. They've really put their money where, the mouth, where their mouths are in terms of the resources that they gave us to produce this lush and layered depiction of us. Um, but it's definitely gotten easier. It is, we are definitely, you know, it's, it's not easy, but it is easier because it was very, very hard 10, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago. It really was like where there was just one version of us or one point of view on us. Um, and now we have these myriad points of view. You know, you can have, you know, Issa Rae's version of us. You could have Lee Davenport and Yvette Lee Bowser's version of us. You can have Tracy Oliver's version of us. They can all coexist in one universe. You can, you know, and there, you know, you could have Katori Hall's version of us. You could have Courtney Kemp's version of us in, in her power universe. You know, you can have all, of, I mean, like all of that coexisting, like it gives me the chills. It really, it really does. But I, you know, I came up at a time when you know, the Maxine Shaw character was seen literally just on the page as a threat. And there were executives who were intimidated by this character on paper and they wanted me to lose her from the show. 
And I was young enough and naive enough to say, to take Maxine Shaw out of the show is to take a big part of me out of the show and I'd rather not do it. And so we came to a, a different compromise that ended up being, you know, really great for the show. And obviously she's one of the most beloved characters and has had a tremendous, you know, cultural impact. You know, it's like, you know, Ayanna Presley and Stacey Abrams have told Eric Alexander that she's the reason they went into public service. So, wow, right? Just hearing <laughs> you say all those names. Time just... when they try to get rid of us. <laughs> just hearing you say all those names just made me so happy. You made me feel so full. Thank you for your time, Yvette. This is a wonderful series Thank and it's just you. a pleasure talking to you. I hope we get to talk again. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. It's my pleasure to bring it to you. Bye-bye. Hi, Lee. Thank you so much for your time. You look so beautiful today and got New York in the background. You're in the background. Exactly. I used to live on this block, so it's very, <laughs> feels like home. I, I love that about New York. I live in Los Angeles. And when I see shows that are set in New York, it has such a different energy. It's sexy. It's fun. Is, could, is it fair to say that New York is an, un, an unseen character, part of this cast of the, all these beautiful people starring on, on the series? Yeah, I think Harlem is for sure a character of this show. And it's a neighborhood that I love, that I lived in for 12 years. Cannot wait to get back to um, there's so much community and there's so much vibrancy and culture and music and language there. Um, and for me, it was the first time that I felt like I was responsible to a space and that space was also responsible for me. Uh, and it's just a really special, cool place to live. And it's crazy to me to think, you know, no one's seen modern Harlem. Uh, you know, when you think of New York, it's like people think that Harlem is, you know, not right there, you know, right above Central Park and in Manhattan and where all these people are living and striving and playing together. So I'm so excited for people to see Harlem this way. I am too. And these beautiful women who are fully realized women who are still trying to figure it out just because you people think you have parts of your lives figured out that everything is in order and, and it's not. And the two are not mutually exclusive. What was it most important for you with these characters to to give them life, to make them relatable? What, it, what was a common thread with developing these archetypes? You know, I think it was about having just like true, authentic um, women and, and, and celebrating their fullness, right? Like, I think all of these women are very dynamic and they're clearly smart and they're clearly, you know, educated and have jobs, um, but life is messy and complicated. And I think that, you know, there's so much emphasis on black girl magic and it's almost like, you know, you get burdened with being like a superhero. And the reality is life is hard and dark sometimes and not so straight and not so linear. And yes, we can like put on the face and do the thing, you know, but you have to have your friends to go to in your vulnerable moments when you mess up, when you don't know where you're going. And that's really what, you know, was the core of the show for me. How do we as black women come together as sisters to like help each other along our journey? Um, and I think that's what, you know, at, the, the, at its root, what the show is about. Watching the these this women, these sisterhood is just so reminiscent of some of those past shows. And it makes me very happy to see us depicted this way on screen. What do you hope is the, the reaction to our, you know, a lot of times people like to say, oh, it's the black version of this. Is is that as high a compliment as people think it is? I think it's a compliment that anyone watching this would think one of the biggest shows on television for women was Sex in the City, and that is a global phenomenon. For people to look at this show and see four Black females and think this show could be globally as iconic and as uh, successful is a compliment. You know, I think you have to receive it from a place of what, what, what would it mean for us, for mm. the new archetype of modern, sexy, ambitious women to be black women living in Harlem. So I think it's very cool and I embrace it. There's been so much great television celebrating women and it's just exciting to be able to give, you know, the audience a new iteration and, and a new show for a new generation. And I hope people love it. I loved it. 
it, it made me very, very happy. Thank you for your time, Lee. It, it's marvelous. I really got into it and I thank you again. Thank you so much. Take care. Shake your booties for black girl nerds.